Hey, come on, put in that chat section. Say he's no ordinary revolutionary. Hallelujah. He came because he wasn't like an ordinary man. That Jesus is God. Oh my God. And he came wrapped up in flesh. And the book of John chapter 1 says in verse 14, and we beheld his glory as the only begotten son of the father. Oh my God. Help me now. Oh my goodness. That Jesus came revealing to us who the father is. And when people say Jesus didn't say that he was God, I beg to differ because John says, oh my Jesus said in the book of John that if you've seen the Father, you have also seen me. And that's saying that I am God. Look at somebody say, God has a name. Hallelujah. His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. He ain't no Buddha. He ain't no Allah. He's got one name. And that's that. In here tonight, and at that name, every knee got the bow, and at that name, every tongue got to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I said, God got a name, his name is not energy, his name ain't on this tongue, his name is Jesus. In the New Living Translation, it reads, You were dead because of your sins, and because your sinful nature was not yet cut away. Then God made you alive with Christ, for he forgave all our sins. Verse 14 reads, he canceled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. Verse 15 reads, in this way, he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities he shamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross. We are starting a new message series entitled today, Revolutionary. Say Jesus was revolutionary. He was revolutionary. Um, we are coming up on Holy Week, one of the highest times of our faith. It is the, it is where our faith stands upon. If it was not for the resurrection and the death of the Lord Jesus Christ, we would have no faith. We would have nothing for our faith to stand upon. We would be like every other religion of another person claiming to have a way to God. And nothing concrete, no concrete evidence, nothing substantial. But what substantiates, ladies and gentlemen, Jesus claimed to be God is the very fact of his resurrection. There are, ladies and gentlemen, that there are critics, um, and critics are those, ladies and gentlemen, who will criticize or try to find something that would try to say that Jesus did not, that there was not a historical Jesus, that, this, that he wasn't a historical Jesus, and that Jesus never resurrected. To my brothers and sisters who are what I call black Israelites, ladies and gentlemen, they make the idea or claim and say that Jesus came from Egypt saying that there really, really wasn't a Jesus and that the white man is the one who pretty much made it up. And the fact of the matter is, for those people who are ignorant like that, ladies and gentlemen, is that Jesus existed well before there was any racial issues. He was with God in the very beginning. And so, ladies and gentlemen, let me make the very clear and make it very clear is that even atheists like a Bart Ehrman, those who critically study Ladies and gentlemen, the resurrection, even they will come to the realization and have resolved that the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ is factual. Even an atheist will come to the to come to it that even the resurrection is factual, that it's evident that it's real. And ladies and gentlemen. Our faith is based upon Jesus dying, well, Jesus coming into the world, dying, and rising from the dead. Because this has been, that right there, that one event revolutionized the whole history of this world. And in this series, we will look at how Jesus' death and resurrection changed history forever. And my goal at the end of this series is that you would be strengthened, 
that, the, that it would strengthen the conviction of our faith and empower us to be bold witnesses of our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, ladies and gentlemen, let's look at what it means to be revolutionary when we talk about Jesus being revolutionary. Join us for Holy Week at Transformation Christian Fellowship. Celebrate with us Resurrection Sunday online or in person as we start a new series from Pastor Brandon entitled Revolutionary and Worship from Transformation Music. For Holy Week or Good Friday special entitled Conversations Around the Cross You Don't Want to Miss. Transformation starts here. First of all, to understand what revolutionary is, you got to understand what is a revolution. A revolution, ladies and gentlemen, means an overthrow of re uh, or repudiation and the thorough replacement of an established government or political system by the people governed. The second definition, ladies and gentlemen, of it would mean a sudden or complete or marked change in something. That's what it would also mean. So when we talk about Jesus, ladies and gentlemen, and we're talking about what it means to be revolutionary, when we when we when we talk about Jesus and when we and when we examine his ministry, when we examine his ministry, ladies and gentlemen, and look at it is the very fact of the matter is this, is that Jesus was not your typical revolutionary. Jesus was not your typical revolutionary. When we think of revolution, we think of like the Black Panther movement. When we think of revolutions, we think of, uh, we think of the Revolutionary War here in America where um, certain individuals stood up to revolt against Great Britain. When we think of revolutions, that America was trying to be independent, ladies and gentlemen, of the hand of Great Britain and be its own country. That's what we, th well, that's what we tend to think about, an overthrow of a political system. And oftentimes, ladies and gentlemen, many people have tried to politicize Jesus' first coming. And the reality of it, ladies and gentlemen, is that Jesus did not come in his initial coming as a political figurehead. Matter of fact, ladies and gentlemen, when they tried to make him a political figurehead, he disappeared from the crowd yeah. because that is not what he came to do. One of the things I love about Jesus is he did not allow the crowd to take him away from his purpose. What oftentimes happens to us, ladies and gentlemen, is when we hear the noise of people trying to put us in a, uh, in a particular place, we deviate off of the track that God has for us because we're going with the noise of the crowd. And trying to prematurely put him in a place that he was not yet to do because he had not yet died. And so, ladies and gentlemen, Jesus is not what we would call your typical political figurehead who, who led a revolt against Rome. He didn't do that. Matter of fact, ladies and gentlemen, when the Pharisees tried to catch him up, he says, well, who do you pay taxes to? Who should we pay taxes to? And Jesus said, give unto Caesar what is due Caesar. And so he did not come, ladies and gentlemen, uh, trying to overthrow the government of Rome. He did not try to overcome uh, uh, what, 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 what they had believed the Messiah was coming to do. They misunderstood the, the, the purpose of the Messiah's first coming. They thought that he was coming to set up, coming on riding on a white horse, coming to overthrow the government because Israel was under the hand of Rome at the time. And Rome allowed the Jews to still practice their religious beliefs. And that's how we come with the Sadducees, the Pharisees, these different Jewish sectors, because Rome had, had allowed them to practice what they practice, just stay out of their business. That's what happened. And so Jesus, ladies and gentlemen, is not your ordinary revolutionary where he's coming as a political figure to overthrow their system. No, Jesus did not come as a revolutionary in that sense. Jesus came as a different kind of revolutionary. Jesus, ladies and gentlemen, uh, 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 he, 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 he did not use force to overthrow a system. He did not use force. He didn't have a militia with him, ladies and gentlemen. He didn't gather angels with him to take over and, and set up his kingdom in his initial coming. No, he did none of that. 
Matter of fact, ladies and gentlemen, I want to bring this claim to you and take you to Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22, to substantiate what I'm saying here, in Luke chapter 22, I want to make it clear in verse 52, and this is when they came to arrest Jesus. Here's what he says. Then Jesus spoke to the leading priests, the captains of the temple guard, and the elders who, who had come for him. And he said this. Watch what he says on the screen. He says, am I some dangerous revolutionary? This is what Jesus said. The New Living Translation pretty much, uh, 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 it, Trans, it, it uh, transcribed what the Greek is really saying. He said, here it is. Am I some dangerous revolutionary? Here's what he says. He adds that you come with swords and clubs to arrest me. He says, why didn't you arrest me in the temple? I was there every day, but this is your moment. The time when the power of darkness reigns. This is what Jesus is saying. Listen, I did nothing to you. I didn't come with no sword in my hand. I didn't come threatening y'all, but you coming to get me. I didn't do. I Listen, I have no weapons of my own. I had none of that stuff. You saw me every day. Why you didn't just come and get me then? And you coming at me with swords and clubs and all of this stuff? He said, am I a dangerous revolutionary? Now that right there, ladies and gentlemen, is very interesting as a question. Because while Jesus is looking at them and said, okay, you're coming to arrest me with all of this stuff. He said, am I a dangerous revolutionary? To them, he was. What made Jesus a threat to them, ladies and gentlemen, was not that he came uh, with uh, uh, with 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 violence or physical force to overthrow something it was the ideas that Jesus and the teachings that he was spreading ladies and gentlemen that caused him to be a threat yeah, yeah. it was not that ladies and gentlemen that Jesus was coming with force or any of that stuff it is what Jesus came and what he was teaching what he was teaching was the kingdom of God at any time you find the kingdom of God being taught, ladies and gentlemen, there is going to be a people who are going to be threatened by that because any time the word of God, the kingdom of God is truly being preached, there is liberation that was coming along with the words that were coming out of Jesus' mouth. And so, ladies and gentlemen, what made them, what made Jesus a threat is, is, is that, ladies and gentlemen, he was more of a revolutionary that proclaimed the kingdom of God and about himself being God, that he was the son of God and that he was the true Messiah. He was making claims to say, yes, I am God. There's many people before Jesus who were making claims to be God. There were many people, ladies and gentlemen, before Jesus that were saying that they had a way to God. But Jesus didn't say that he had a way to God. Jesus said that he was it. That's it. Jesus, ladies and gentlemen, revolutionized things because he, oh well, my God, his claims was exhorting authority over the religious leaders of that day. So when Jesus is saying that he is the Messiah, ladies and gentlemen, and when Jesus is making these bold claims and healing people and the word of God is being backed up with these signs and miracles and wonders that start to substantiate his claims and people become threatened because of it. It threatened the religious leaders because their, oh my God, their payday was getting cut down. Because what they were doing is that they started outside of the law of Moses. They started coming up with all of the rest of these traditions and customs and these rules, ladies and gentlemen, and using these rules to make profit off of the people. And Jesus, ladies and gentlemen, was coming and he was a threat to that. He was what Jesus was coming to overthrow, ladies and gentlemen, in his initial coming. And that's what made him revolutionary was he was coming to overthrow a religious system. He was coming to overthrow the power that sin had on us. He was coming, ladies and gentlemen, to overthrow the power of Satan. Oh, my God. And his hold and his bondage that he's had on the people of God. He was coming to overthrow that. 
And that's, ladies and gentlemen, that's the reason why they had to kill him. That's why they had to plot against him. Because what he was doing, he was messing up business, ladies and gentlemen. His, he was becoming a threat to them. Ladies and gentlemen, He would, they were outraged about Jesus because he was, oh my God, he was mingling with people that they put in the law that they shouldn't be mingling with. Oh my God, not only was he doing that, ladies and gentlemen, but they were so mad about him that he came in John chapter 2 and started switching and throwing the tables all around and say you done made my house oh my god this, he said this is my house and this house should be called a house of prayer and you tried to make it with money changers and all of this junk he said get that stuff out of here this is my house this is a house of prayer he said that this is my house of prayer. He got so mad at them. Oh, and then and then they got so mad at Jesus, right? Is that Jesus, ladies and gentlemen, was healing on the Sabbath. Oh, my God. And they said, what in the world? You can't do that on the Sabbath. And Jesus looked at them and said, what do you mean I can't do this on the Sabbath? He said, I am the Lord of the Sabbath. My God in here. Hallelujah. And when Jesus said to them, ladies and gentlemen, when he talked about his precious Abraham, he said, oh, my God, he's, oh, my goodness. He said, I will, I am before him. He, oh, my God, he would have, oh, my God, he would have been blessed to see my day. And so, ladies and gentlemen, when he talked about Moses, he said, I am. I was before he was. Then they wouldn't have talked about Abraham. They said, guess what? He would have rejoiced to see my day. Let me tell you something. They were mad about Jesus because Jesus was bold about what he was saying. Jesus was bold because he knew who he was. He knew what he came to do. And that's what made him a revolutionary. Say, this is a bad man. This is a bad man right here. That you can walk in such confidence like this. This is a bad man. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. When you know that you who you are, it don't matter what people have to say. Because every time they tried to trap Jesus, he always knew how to deal with them. Because he knew their hearts were wicked. He knew that their hearts were far away from God. He knew that they were not a representative presentation of God that those people they should have known the word of God they should have known that he was the true Messiah but they didn't know he was the true Messiah if they knew he was the true Messiah they never would have killed him so ladies and gentlemen what Jesus came to do is overthrow a system that did not have anything to do with a political system but it was a spiritual it was a spiritual condition that needed to be fixed. It was a spiritual condition that needed to be fixed, ladies and gentlemen. Because, ladies and gentlemen, we were far away from God. The relationship had been cut off because of one man's, un, uh, one man's disobedience. Oh, my God. The book of Romans would tell us, ladies and gentlemen, Paul tells us in Romans that through one man's disobedience, death. Death reigned. Let me tell you something. You and I were in bad shape. You and I, because of his dis Adam's disobedience, the first, dis the first Adam's disobedience, we were heading down a path of damnation. We were heading down a path where, let me tell you something, we deserved wrath. That we deserved, we deserved to get what we, we had coming to us. Let me tell you something in that day, ladies and gentlemen, God had to put things in place to allow people to worship. Worship was not as freely as we do now. Worship, ladies and gentlemen, they had to have one, a priest to go before them, oh God, in the temple. And guess what? They had to put bells at the very bottom of the, t of the priest's garments because if they would have heard those bells, they know he was still alive because he couldn't just go into the holy of holies any old type of way. You would have to pray that this priest was doing his job and that he was being holy and living right because if he wasn't living right he would have been able to he would have gone in there and he wouldn't have been able to offer up nothing because at the end of the day God would have killed him right then and there that is not way for us to live ladies and gentlemen they were sacrificing goats and the, the blood of animals and all of that stuff let me tell you something I'm glad I don't have to do that I'm glad I don't got to go chase no lamb listen they t I'm not doing all of that <laughs> having the cut blood open and all of that stuff that's nasty I don't want to do that stuff I don't want to have to sacrifice no animals and do all of that junk just uh, no 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 and that's why I love what the scripture says he says blood of animals and stuff like that you did not take any delight in 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? Listen, if we were living in that day, you had to sacrifice this stuff like, oh, come on, let, we got to go run and get, catch that chicken. Let me see if I can cut it open and <laughs> sacrifice it up to God. <laughs> Ooh, that's too much, man. That's too much work. Because guess what? Sin has you thinking that you have to work and do this and do that and do that. And we were in a bad place. So, ladies and gentlemen, the gospel teaches us that we were far away from God, that there is no good in any of us outside of God. I don't care who you are. There is nothing good in you. I don't care. The, the, the scripture says that the heart is wicked and no man would know it. Let me tell you something. Yes, Pastor Brandon got some wickedness in his heart. Yes, EP got some wickedness in his heart. Uh, Lady O got some wickedness in her heart. Everybody got some wickedness, wickedness in their heart. And guess what? It only took Jesus to cleanse us of it. See, people think that when you get around resurrection time, I know that we want to talk about the Easter egg hunt. I know that we want to talk about the Easter bunny. I know we want to get everything away from and we want to get in this humanistic state. But let me tell you something now. The gospel is not born because you need to be reminded that you are far away from God. You are on your way to hell. I know you don't want to talk about this. You are on your way to hell. But there was a savior that came down from 42 some generations and said I'm not gonna let you go down there I'm gonna quit my life as a sacrifice and I'm gonna put an end to this mess hallelujah hallelujah God said to himself on the throne if I can't send anybody if nobody else can do it I'm just gonna come off this throne and send myself Let me tell you something you and I need to be reminded because this is what we are. This is what our faith stands upon. This is what our faith is built upon. That let me tell you something if it was not for the grace of God. That's why I love what Paul said. He said I am who I am because of the grace of God that was bestowed upon me. Let me tell you something I'm nothing without the grace of God. I don't, I don't just say this but this is something I believe as a conviction in my heart. If it had not been for the grace of God with Jesus blood I don't know where I would be don't know what I would do but I know that the grace of God has saved my life hallelujah and so Jesus the revolutionary Look at somebody say he's no ordinary revolutionary. He come on put in that chat section say he's no ordinary revolutionary. Hallelujah. He came because he wasn't like an ordinary man. That Jesus is God. Oh my God. And he came wrapped up in flesh. And the book of John chapter 1 says in verse 14 and we beheld his glory as the only begotten son of the father. Oh my God. Help me now. Oh my goodness. That Jesus came revealing to us who the father is and when people say Jesus didn't say that he was God I beg to differ because John says oh my Jesus said in the book of John that if you've seen the father you have also seen me and that's saying that I am God look at somebody say God has a name hallelujah his name is Jesus hallelujah he ain't no Buddha he ain't no ally He's got one name, and at that I called it here tonight, and at that name every knee got the power, and at that name every tongue got to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I said God got a name. His name is not energy. His name ain't on his tongue. His name is Jesus. so and so I'm coming now and so we find ourselves in the book of Colossians where Paul is talking about circumcision here and how we needed to be circumcised by the heart and he's sharing with the people of Colossae and he's showing them in this text of what Jesus has done for us hallelujah as a revolutionary he was and his work on the cross ladies and gentlemen that what he did is that Paul first tells us that you were dead you were dead because of your sins 
because of your sinful nature, was not cut away. He's saying, you and I, we were dead in our trespasses. Guess what? Trespasses, ladies and gentlemen, is a type of sin. You and I were dead in our trespasses, man, doing whatever we wanted to do. We didn't have nothing to control. Holy Spirit gives us self-control. We, no, we didn't have no self-control. We were in an animalistic nature. We were dead in our trespasses. He said, you were cut away. Then, hmm, then God made you alive with Christ, for he forgave all our sins. There is not one sin that God has not forgiven you from. All of it, ladies and gentlemen, was put on him. All of it was put on him. And so with Jesus' revolutionary work on the cross, ladies and gentlemen, let me give you point one here and here. Here it is now that Jesus' death and resurrection, ladies and gentlemen, his revolutionary work, what it did was put away sin. It put away sin. It, it, it put away sin. And here we go. Here we go. Here what he says it right here in verse 14. In verse 14 of Colossians, he said he canceled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. So what happened is, ladies and gentlemen, what happened is, is that on that Good Friday or Thursday, however you want to put it, I'm not here to get into specifics. The fact of the matter is that Jesus died. If you want to argue about that stuff, that's so dumb. The reality is that he died. He died on Golgotha's hill. And what, helping, what happened there on Golgotha, what they didn't understand, they were trying to mock Jesus, said, if you be the Christ, come down from the cross. And Jesus stood up there anyway, because guess what? even if he would have came down they still wouldn't have believed <laughs> oh my god help me in here don't you fall for the trap of somebody trying to make you prove yourself jesus said you huh? oh my god lord forgive them huh? for they know not what they're doing huh? they're saying all of this junk and don't understand huh? that even they're mocking uh, lying cheating having self huh? i'm piercing that right here right on the cross huh? they don't understand what i'm doing in that moment Hallelujah. <laughs> ah, they didn't understand what Jesus was doing. They didn't understand, ladies and gentlemen. And so right there on that cross, ladies and gentlemen, every sin imaginable, Jesus, there was a charge. And guess what? There was a charge, a handwritten charge, as the New King James Version says. And that was, oh, my God, of all of the stuff. And guess what? Gee, God poured out his wrath on his son. And the Bible says, Says, uh, that it pleased God uh, to bruise his son. Uh, why? Because the sin of the world uh, had been taken upon him. Uh, hallelujah. And when Jesus, oh my God, uh, blood was spread out, uh, the Bible says that without blood, uh, there is no remission of sin. Uh, and so the blood of Jesus uh, would have to be perfect uh, and spotless. Uh, because with that blood being perfect uh, and spotless, ladies and gentlemen uh, what happened was uh, was that was the sacrifice uh, that was sufficient uh, to clear the charges uh, you had charges on your name uh, you were a liar uh, you were oh my god a deceiver uh, a cheater uh, oh my god help me now uh, you had a whole lot of stuff going on with you uh, you were a womanizer uh, you got trouble in your mind uh, and jesus said uh, i died on it uh, i got it cleared on your name uh, you you got a clear record, and that's why you the club of Galatians say, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away, and behold, all things are made new, because Jesus pleaded your case on the cross. Woo. Hallelujah. 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 Can I can I move? Can I move? I'm almost finished now. I'm almost finished. Here it is. It said Jesus death and resurrection put away sin. I know people don't preach about this anymore because you want to hear about me, me, and I, I, I. But let me tell you something you better know about your faith. Because when, 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 guess what? When the devil come knocking on your door, you got to be reminded of the victory you got in Jesus' name. You got to be reminded of the victory that you have, ladies and gentlemen. When Jesus got on that cross and defeated the grave. Oh my God, you got to be reminded of that tonight.
First Peter chapter two. First Peter chapter two, verse 24 is coming on your screen now. It's messing up in the in the room, but here it is. First Peter chapter two, verse 24 says, who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree. On the tree. He said, bore our sins in his own body. Jesus couldn't come as a spirit form. He had to come as a man. He couldn't take on our sins in spirit form. He needed a body. Oh, my God, help me now. Hallelujah. And let me tell you something. And those of you who thought it was a resurrection of a spirit man, no, it was a resurrection of his body. He was not a ghost that came up like a Casper. No, 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 no. He wasn't none of that. No, he came, his body resurrected. Hallelujah. Oh, my God, help me in this room. I'm getting excited of the gospel of the Jesus Christ. And that's why I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Because unto it is the power. Oh, my God, come on now. On the salvation. He said he bore his body hallelujah he bore his body hallelujah uh, he, he bore our sins in his own body on the tree that we having dead to the sins might live for righteousness by whose stripes you were healed he said listen on the cross he bore our sins in his body every lash he took every nail that went in his wrist every nail that went in his feet Every, every when he pierced him in his side when he hung up there at the point of exhaustion there's no way that jesus should have survived even getting to the point of the cross because of how much blood he lost on the via della rosa ladies and gentlemen he stood there and he and he bore the sins of the world in his body that's why some people don't believe because they relate what sins to a body why would he need to die on a tree because it shows sacrifice what god do you know ladies and gentlemen that you know would come down and sacrifice himself to show his love for people. What has Allah, Buddha, your energy, and all of that stuff ever done for you? Ooh, I know y'all don't like this because you want to manifest air. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> but the reality of it is, is what has that done for you? Secondly, ladies and gentlemen, I'm on my way home. Jesus' death and resurrection destroyed the works of the devil. Hallelujah. I like it. Let's go back here. Let's go back here. Colossians 2.15. In this way, he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities. He shamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross. Ladies and gentlemen, he put them to shame. Ladies and gentlemen, what they thought was a great day in their eyes. Did they didn't realize what they thought that they had won, but Jesus had won the whole time. <laughs> Hallelujah. They thought that they were doing something to Jesus. Hallelujah. When I look at the book, oh my God. God, when I look at the, around the time when Jesus was arrested and, and, and when they had him tried on different courts and they brought him to uh, Herod and then they brought him to Pontius Pilate, John records and, and, and Pilate asks himself, well, aren't you going to speak up? Don't you know I got the power to save you? <laughs> Jesus said, you don't have no power to do nothing. You don't got no power to do nothing. And then when I think about the garden of Gethsemane, ladies and gentlemen, when Peter pulled out that sword and, and struck that man's ear and Jesus said, hey, put that sword down. How do you, if you live by the sword, you'll die by the sword. He said, I can send a legion of angels to come and get me. Now, let me tell you something. The enemy thinks he had Jesus. They thought they had Jesus. But the reality was is that Jesus would follow the plan. And on that cross, while God was pleased because his son was taken on the sins of the world, I would also suggest that he was also pleased because his son is fulfilling the orders of his daddy oh my god in here and that he was a fulfilling oh my god the scriptures and jesus said i did not come to abolish the law but i came to fulfill it i came to fulfill a word that my daddy gave back in the garden when he told that servant that the seed of a woman would crush his head i came to fulfill the prophecy of all of the prophets of the old testament who came to saw my day oh my god I 
king of the field When David said in the book of Psalms That he, oh my God, would suffer many things In Psalm 22 And he said he thirst And when he got on the cross He thirst And he fulfilled the promise of the scripture And he did it to the letter First John chapter three, verse eight. He says, he who sins is the devil, is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Let me tell you something. The work of the devil is sin, ladies and gentlemen. The work of the devil, ladies and gentlemen, he destroyed on that cross was the, the bondage that he had. Oh, my God, all over us, that the power, power of death. And he took it out of the hands of, oh, my God, the hands of Satan. Hallelujah, ladies and gentlemen. Jesus was such a revolutionary in the sense that even when, oh, my God, people wonder what was Jesus doing between Friday and Sunday is that he went all the way down in the Hades and he took the key out of Satan's hands. Hallelujah, the keys of life and death out of his hands. Oh my God, he put he unlocked those who've been in a holding place because Jesus said, I came to prepare a way, prepare a place for you. And he told him in John chapter 14, don't let your heart be troubled, but believe in me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Believe in the Father and also in me that in my Father's house, there are many mansions. He said, I wouldn't have told you this if it was not so. Hallelujah. That's what Jesus was doing, ladies and gentlemen. And I don't know who I'm preaching to tonight, but let me tell you something. Whatever work of Satan that's trying to keep you back, I tell you, Jesus put a toe back on. Jesus destroyed it. Let me tell you what you will allow him to keep you down. Jesus put it into it with his resurrection. Let me tell you something. That's why we're going in a great season of joy. Because there's a resurrection that's coming out of what has been dead. What COVID has brought death. COVID has stuck on rid of things. But there's a resurrection that's coming. There's a Sunday that's coming. And I came tonight to this morning to tell you. Oh my God, as well as I know my name. That you're right. There's a resurrection resurrection season is coming your family's being resurrected oh my god your money's being resurrected your health is being resurrected your business is being resurrected hallelujah it has no more oh my god it cannot stay dead any longer it gotta rise hallelujah hallelujah I said he disarmed it. <laughs> Hallelujah. He didn't disarm it with a gun. <laughs> he didn't disarm it with a sword. <laughs> he didn't disarm it with any of that. <laughs> he disarmed it with a nail in his hand. <laughs> and a nail in his feet. <laughs> he disarmed it with a wooden cross. <laughs> That's how he disarmed the power of Satan. <laughs> Hallelujah. He disarmed it. <laughs> but not, oh my God. <laughs> but not giving up. <laughs> he disarmed it. <laughs> but not coming down from the cross. <laughs> he disarmed it. <laughs> he Oh my God, that despising the shame. He got a joy that was set before him. He condored the cross. The size and the shame. He put them to mockery because he stood there when he could have came down. And so, ladies and gentlemen, as I come to a close, when we look at that, he's no ordinary revolutionary. Hallelujah. It's because he didn't use miracle military tactical strategies he used it with nails in his hands and love that's why he stayed there hallelujah and when he disarmed it ladies and gentlemen and he knew the time had come john chapter 19 verse 30 as i come to a close it says when jesus had tasted it hallelujah this is after they took the vigor and, and put it on a sponge and put it to his mouth he said after Hallelujah. I said when Jesus had tasted it, he said it is finished ladies and gentlemen uh, and then bowed his head and gave up his spirit ladies and gentlemen those three words changed the trajectory of all mankind 
is when he said it was finished on the cross and guess what because he's no ordinary and he finished it all there you and I can now have life because he finished it there you don't gotta go back to your old man you don't gotta go back to that he said now the life that I now live I now live it in Christ I now live it by the spirit because Jesus said it was finished and because Jesus said it's finished I don't no longer gotta go through that anymore those three symbol words completed it and put it into that for eternity because he said it is finished ladies and gentlemen as we go through this series you will come to find that those three words makes Jesus a revolutionary figurehead. And that's why he is so controversial. That's why it's been debated for so many years. Why has it been debated? Why are other religions not as scrutinized as Christianity? I tell you why. You will only scrutinize something that you believe to be, that you believe really does seem to be real. That's why you'll scrutinize it. Because it has so many facts towards it. That's why so many people want to display prove it they want to say different things about it because there gotta be there there is some truth to it and people want to throw it down but i'm telling you now that when jesus said destroy this building and this temple in three days i'll raise it up they come on saying hey he said he would destroy the temple in three days but they didn't realize the temple he was talking about was his own body but in three days it's getting raised back up Stand to your feet, say Jesus, he no ordinary revolutionary. He said he no ordinary revolutionary. Sunday is coming. Sunday is coming, hallelujah. If you don't know Jesus tonight, I give you Jesus. Hallelujah, I give you Jesus.